Stations of the Cross for the fifth Sunday of Lent by Reverend Dick. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Mark chapter 15 verses 43 to 49 Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last he said truly this man was God's son There were also women looking on from a distance Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him, and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. the dead body of Jesus. It is hard to take this in, that Jesus really died, that his body became a lifeless thing, an empty shell. If we have seen death, we know how unreal a dead body looks. It is so obviously empty, incomplete, utterly different from what it was a few moments before. Realistically, I wouldn't be human if I were entirely unafraid of death. Yet, in spite of my natural human fear, I have hope. Christ has been there before me. My only wish is that when God calls me, I shall be able to say, like Christ, it is finished. The work you gave me is done. After looking at her son, Jesus kneeled with straps to the cross, with a puncture wound on his side, water and blood flowing from the wound. Mary was afraid the soldiers would return, remove her son and take him to the burial site for criminals. Amazingly, a party of men passed through the judgment gate with ladders. John tells Mary, do not fear. They are friends of Jesus. The men stop, and the ladder is placed against the cross. Joseph and Nicodemus salute Mary, but they are not able to speak to each other because of the emotions in their hearts. As Mary watches in deep sorrow, Joseph and Nicodemus lovingly and reverently touch the sacred body of Jesus with the assistance of John. The crown of thorns is removed and handed to Mary. Next, the nails and straps that are holding Jesus to the cross are carefully removed and handed to Mary. Jesus is methodically lowered and removed from the cross and placed in the open arms of Mary, who is on the ground at the base of the cross. Think about how hard it would be to see your son tortured and then kneel to a cross in a public forum for everyone to see until he should come to death. It will be even more difficult to have no means to remove your son and have to depend on friends to come to, to his aid. When the lifeless body of Jesus was removed from the cross, the sorrow in the hearts of his friends must have been great. Did they know that this was a part of God's plan? Did they see his weakness as true strength? Did they realize that he would rise from the dead and change the world? When grief is so new and so harsh, what you know or hope for is of little consolation. For now, their teacher, their friend and their Messiah was gone. It is easy to get tangled up in the world and lose sight of that which is eternal. The emotions and feelings we have in any given situation are gifts from God. 
Some would say we are most alive when we are in grief. However, there's also the ability to move from that point to a point of hope that makes us human. Who is God calling us to help move from grief to hope? Have we failed to place our trust in God and remain entrenched in despair? Let us never forget Paul's words of the Corinthians. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. Jesus, how brutally you were put to death, how gently you are taken from the cross. Your suffering and pain are ended, and you are put in the lap of your mother. The dirt and blood are wiped away, you are treated with love. As a child, sometimes I treat others better when they're sad or in pain. When somebody dies, I become very gentle and kind. I know it's the good and kind things people say about those who have died. As an adult, I seem to be kinder when someone dies. If only I could learn to see the good things about them while they were alive. If only I would tell those around me how much I love them while I still have the opportunity to do so. Help me look for the good in those around me, especially the ones I love the most. Help me live this day as if it were the last. Help me become a more gentle and loving person through my greater appreciation for those around me. The 14th Station of the Cross Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. John chapter 19, verses 39 to 42. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also appeared bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices of the linen cloth, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus there. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. It is a tricky decision, and one that confronts many families as they plan the funeral of a loved one. And the final prayers of committal are said, should the curtains that surround the coffin be closed or remain open? What will make the grief easier to bear? The coffin disappearing for sight in a gut-wrenching moment of farewell? Or having to walk out of chapel with your back turned to the coffin for the case of the remains of the person you love? We enter into that same ghastly, bitter grief at this station as the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross and laid in a tomb. That rolled stone, so heavy that it would take many men to move it, must have pressed home the reality of the woman's loss. Jesus is entombed, out of sight, dead, the precious body now lying cold on the stone slab. Yet this place of darkness is not really a tomb at all. It is a womb, and in just a few days new life will burst forth from it with such power and glory that the stone can't possibly get in the way. This place of death is to be the place of resurrection. For those funeral families, the sad truth is that there will always be a limit to the comfort that can be found in plans and arrangements. It is from this tomb the place where death itself is destroyed through the power of Jesus Christ, that we find hope in death 
and comfort in grief. So what does, and that he was buried, add to the essential Christian message? For one thing, it prepares the way for the affirmation of the resurrection. To say that Jesus died and was raised without mentioning his burial could lead to a misunderstanding of the story. One might think that Jesus was immediately brought back to life from the cross, or that he was immediately jettisoned to heaven. That he was buried eliminates these options and explains the place from which Jesus was raised. But more important by far, the mention of the burial of Jesus makes it absolutely clear that Jesus really died on the cross. He didn't just appear to die. Whatever else can be, can be known about Jesus, all the evidence from both biblical and extra-biblical sources points to the simple fact that he really died upon the cross. When the earliest Christians proclaimed the burial of Jesus, they were saying, in effect, that he really, really died. Had Charles Dickens been among the first Christians, he might have written that Jesus was as dead as a doornail, just like Jacob Marley. Some questions or reflections. When in your life has a deeper invitation to trust in God occurred? And how does the cross or church give meaning to your life? A prayer for the coming week. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on God now and forever. Amen. <laughs>